The Dallas Cowboys have released Ezekiel Elliott. He's the star running back for years and years and years. It's interesting. For a four-year period, the Cowboys' centerpiece on offense was Zeke. For the last four years, the Titans' centerpiece has been Derrick Henry. For three years, the Panthers' centerpiece was Christian McCaffrey. For six to seven years, the Vikings' centerpiece was Adrian Peterson. Arguably as talented a running backs as we have had in a long time. 16 years of dominance from the run game. Zero Super Bowls and just two conference championships. Both losses. You don't get much of a payoff when you make your big bet, and the Cowboys did on a running back. And it doesn't last very long to begin with. Brady could still come back and play again. The last three Super Bowl champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 28th in rushing. The L.A. Rams, 25th. The Kansas City Chiefs, 20th. Dallas made the wrong bet. Jerry Jones thought he could replace Bill Parcells, replaced Jimmy with Barry Switzer, and made a big bet, $90 million two years early to Zeke. The last team to win a Super Bowl that led the NFL in rushing was the 85 Chicago Bears. And let's be honest, that defense won the championship. All due respect, the best running back I've ever seen, sweetness Walter Payton. If you're a fan of an NFL team and you're screaming for your team to sign your running back to another contract, <clears throat> New York Giants, you've got the wrong quarterback. Quarterbacks lead you to Super Bowls, not run games. You can have one just like you can have a nice yard. It's not selling the home. The kitchen is, the structure is, the neighborhood, the location is, the bedrooms, the bathrooms. Yards are nice, and running backs are nice too. But Dallas made the wrong bet for three and a half years. And you could say, Colin, Christian McCaffrey, 49ers, eh? Actually, that's the greatest example to prove my point. When did their offense officially die? When seventh-round rookie quarterback Brock Purdy got hurt. They won before Christian McCaffrey got there. They scored on plenty of drives that Christian McCaffrey didn't lead them. But it was when this seventh-round unknown quarterback, Iowa State, got hurt against Philadelphia. McCaffrey was still there. The offense dried up. No running backs taken in last year's first round. There's a possibility there'll be no running backs taken in this round. The NFL is all about making bets. Who to pay big, who to pay early. Patrick Mahomes, pay him early. Joe Burrow, pay him early. Lamar Jackson, maybe not pay him. But paying big money to running backs, second contracts, making them the centerpiece of your offense has a very little chance of leading you to a championship. And even if he's good, it won't last very long. Once again, Jerry Jones simply made the wrong bet. Great businessman, not so great at helping run an NFL franchise. So Aaron Rodgers is not officially a Jet yet. It is interesting, and I think it's kind of being downplayed that Aaron Rodgers did admit that he was 90% retired when he went into the retreat, came out and said, I'll be a Jet. If you were 90% anything, that's what you're eventually going to do really quickly. So I don't assume he's going to play long for the Jets. But it is interesting, had he retired, what would his legacy be? Because not all great quarterbacks age well. Joe Namath, a great example. Far more interceptions than touchdowns, losing record, iconic, but nobody really thinks he's an all-time great. They did at the time. Uh, Brett Favre, not very redeemable lately off the field, a turnover machine, even though he had great offensive coaches. He was more iconic than amazing gunslinger. Feels like, you know, the John Wayne of acting. It's sort of outdated. Steve Young, by the way, has aged well. Many believe now, probably correctly, the great runner, the great thrower. Eventually, he would have been even greater had he not had to sit behind Joe Montana for years. What if Aaron retired? I think much like his personality, it would be complicated. Um, efficiency, A+. Plus. Arm, excellent. But underachieving in the playoffs and difficult, aloof and prickly. That's fair. 
That's an incredibly fair thing to say. Very complicated. Brady was very clean. His resume is clean. The GOAT in New England, Super Bowl in Tampa, huge deal at Fox Sports. Peyton Manning, clean. Super Bowl in Indy, iconic Super Bowl in Denver, massive success, lots of fun stuff off the field. John Elway, retired, multiple Super Bowls, iconic, big business success. Now golf's a lot. But Aaron reminds me a lot of Big Ben. That's what I think about. That's how we don't talk Big Ben since he left. A lot of it's his own doing. Think about Big Ben and Aaron Rodgers, the similarities. You're left with holes and underachievement and lots of drama. And what are the three things they have in common? Both only semi-committed in the offseason. Like there were big jokes about Big Ben. He disappeared in the offseason. Aaron Rodgers now disappears in the offseason. Both struggled with young teammates. Aaron this year, great example. Big Ben, his entire career, young skill players. He struggled. They took the attention away from him. And Big Ben and Aaron, off seasons, life, you can see him retiring, playing golf with a handful of close friends, and that's it. But I think it's complicated, his legacy, much as Aaron Rodgers is complicated. First ballot Hall of Famer, excellent arm, unique style, terrific career, but prickly, can be difficult to coach, demanded transparency, yet gave teammates, coaches, and the Packers very little of it. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.